The Swift Programming Language 5.6 Edition, copyright 2022 by Apple and made available under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Collection Types Swift provides three primary collection types, known as arrays, sets, and dictionaries, for storing collections of values. Arrays are ordered collections of values. Sets are unordered collections of unique values. Dictionaries are unordered collections of key value associations. Arrays, sets, and dictionaries in Swift are always clear about the types of values and keys that they can store. This means that you cannot insert a value of the wrong type into a collection by a mistake. It also means you can be confident about the type of values you will retrieve from a collection. Note, Swift's array, set, and dictionary types are implemented as generic collections. For more information about generic types and collections, see generics. Mutability of collections. If you create an array, a set, or a dictionary and assign it to a variable, the collection that is created will be mutable. This means that you can change or mutate the collection after it is created by adding, removing, or changing items in the collection. If you assign an array, a set, or a dictionary to a constant, that collection is immutable and its size and contents cannot be changed. Note, it is good practice to create immutable collections in all cases where the collection does not need to change. Doing so makes it easier for you to reason about your code and enables the Swift compiler to optimize the performance of the collections you create. Arrays. An array stores values of the same type in an ordered list. The same value can appear in an array multiple times at different positions. Note, Swift's array type is bridged to Foundation's NS Array class. For more information about using array with Foundation and Coco, see Bridging Between Array and NS Array. Array Type Shorthand Syntax. The type of a Swift array is written in full as array element, where element is the type of values the array is allowed to store. You can also write the type of an array in shorthand form, such as element. Although the two forms are functionally identical, the shorthand form is preferred and is used throughout this guide when referring to the type of an array. Creating an empty array. You can create an empty array of a certain type using initializer syntax. Note that the type of the sumins variable is inferred to be array of integer from the type of the initializer. Alternatively, if the context already provides type information such as a function argument or an already typed variable or constant, you can create an empty array with an empty array literal, which is written with an empty pair of square brackets. Creating an array with a default value. Swift's array type also provides an initializer for creating an array of a certain size with all of its values set to the same default value. You pass this as initializer a default value of the appropriate type called repeating and the number of times that value is repeated in a new array called count. Creating an array by adding two arrays together. You can create a new array by adding together two existing arrays with compatible types with the addition operator. The new arrays type is inferred from the type of the two arrays that you add together. Creating an array with an array literal. You can also initialize an array with an array literal, which is a shorthand way to write one or more values as an array collection. An array literal is written as a list of values separated by commas surrounded by a pair of square brackets. This example shows how to create an array called shopping list to store string values. The shopping list variable is declared as an array of string values written as string with square brackets around it. Because this particular array has specified a value type of string, it is allowed to store string values only. Here, the shopping list array is initialized with two string values, eggs and milk, written within an array literal. Note, the shopping list array is declared as a variable with the var introducer and not a constant with the let introducer because more items are added to the shopping list in the examples below. In this case, the array literal contains two string values and nothing else. This matches the type of the shopping list variables declaration, an array that can only contain string values, and so the assignment of the array literal is permitted as a way to initialize the shopping list with 
two items. Thanks to Swift's type inference, you don't have to write the type of the array if you are initializing it with an array literal containing values of the same type. The initialization of shopping list could have been written in this shorter form instead. Because all values in the array literal are of the same type, Swift can infer that array of string is the correct type to use for the shopping list variable. Accessing and modifying an array. You can access and modify an array through its methods and properties or by using subscript syntax. To find out the number of items in an array, check its read-only count property. Use the boolean isEmpty property as a shortcut for checking whether the count property is equal to zero. You can add a new item to the end of an array by calling the array's append method. Alternatively, append an array of one or more compatible items with the addition assignment operator. Retrieve a value from the array by using subscript syntax, passing the index of the value you want to retrieve within square brackets immediately after the name of the array. Note. The first item in the array has an index of zero, not one. Arrays in Swift are always zero indexed. You can use subscript syntax to change an existing value at a given index. When you use subscript syntax, the index you specify needs to be valid. For example, writing shopping list, shopping list dot count equal salt to try to append an item to the end of an array would result in a runtime error. You can also use subscript syntax to change a range of values at once, even if the replacement set of values has a different length than the range you are replacing. This example replaces chocolate spread, cheese, and butter with bananas and apples. To insert an item into the array at a specified index, call the array's insert at method. This call to insert at method inserts a new item with the value of maple syrup at the very beginning of the shopping list, indicated by an index of zero. Similarly, you remove an item from the array with the remove at method. This method removes the item at the specified index and returns the removed item, although you can ignore the return value if you do not need it. Any gaps in an array are closed when an item is removed. So the value at index zero is once again equal to six eggs. Note, if you try to access or modify a value for an index that is outside of the array's existing bounds, you will trigger a runtime error. You can check that an index is valid before using it by comparing it to the array's count property. The largest valid index in an array is count minus one because arrays are indexed from zero. However, when count is zero, meaning the array is empty, there are no valid indexes. If you want to remove the final item from an array, use the remove last method rather than the remove at method to avoid the need to query the array's count property. Like the remove at method, remove last returns the removed item. Iterating over an array. You can iterate over the entire set of values in an array with the for in loop. If you need the integer index of each item as well as its value, use the enumerated method to iterate over the array instead. For each item in the array, the enumerated method returns a tuple composed of an integer and the item. The integers start at zero and count up by one for each item. If you enumerate over a whole array, these integers match the item's indices. You can decompose the tuple into temporary constants or variables as part of the iteration. For more about the for in loop, see for in loops. Sets. A set stores distinct values of the same type in a collection with no defined ordering. You can use a set instead of an array when the order of items is not important or when you need to ensure that an item only appears once. Note, Swift set type is bridged to Foundation's NS set class. For more information about using set with Foundation and Coco, see bridging between set and NS set. Hash values for set types. A type must be hashable in order to be stored in a set. That is, the type must provide a way to compute a hash value for itself. A hash value is an integer value that is the same for all objects that compare equally, such that if a equal equal b, the hash value of a is equal to the hash value of b. All of Swift's basic types, such as string, 
int, double, and bool are hashable by default and can be used as set value types or dictionary key types. Enumeration case values without associated values, as described in enumerations, are also hashable by default. Note, you can use your own custom types as set value types or dictionary key types by making them conform to the hashable protocol from the Swift standard library. For more information about implementing the required hash into method, see hashable. For information about conforming to protocols, see protocols. Set type syntax. The type of a Swift set is written as set element, where element is the type that the set is allowed to store. Unlike arrays, sets do not have an equivalent shorthand form. Creating and initializing an empty set. You can create an empty set of a certain type using initializer syntax. Note, the type of the letters variable is inferred to be set character from the type of the initializer. Alternatively, if the context already provides type information, such as a function argument or an already typed variable or constant, you can create an empty set with an empty array literal. Creating a set with an array literal. You can also initialize a set with an array literal as a shorthand way to write one or more values as a set collection. This example creates a set called favorite genres to store string values. The favorite genres variable is declared as a set of string values written as set string. Because this particular set has specified a value type of string, it is only allowed to store string values. Here, the favorite genres set is initialized with three string values, rock, classical, and hip hop, written within an array literal. Note, the favorite genre set is declared as a variable with the var introducer and not a constant with the let introducer because items are added and removed in the examples below. A set type cannot be inferred from an array literal alone, so the type set must be explicitly declared. However, because of Swift's type inference, you do not have to write the type of the set's elements if you are initializing it with an array literal that contains values of just one type. The initialization of favorite genres could have been written in this shorter form instead. Because all values in the array literal are of the same type, Swift can infer that set string is the correct type to use for the favorite genres variable. Accessing and modifying a set. You access and modify a set through its methods and properties. To find out the number of items in a set, check its read-only count property. Use the boolean isEmpty property as a shortcut for checking whether the count property is equal to zero. You can add a new item into a set by calling the set's insert method. You can remove an item from a set by calling the set's remove method, which removes the item if it is a member of the set and returns the removed value, or returns nil if the set did not contain it. Alternatively, all items in a set can be removed with its remove all method. To check whether a set contains a particular item, use the contains method. Iterating over a set. You can iterate over the values in a set with the for in loop. For more about the for in loop, see for in loops. Swift set type does not have a defined ordering. To iterate over the values in a set in a specific order, use the sorted method, which returns the set's elements as an array sorted using the less than operator. Performing set operations. You can efficiently perform fundamental set operations, such as combining two sets together, determining which values two sets have in common, or determining whether two sets contain all, some, or none of the same values. Fundamental set operations. This illustration depicts two sets, A and B, with the results of various set operations represented by the shaded regions. Use the intersection method to create a new set with only the values common to both sets. Use the symmetric difference method to create a new set with the values in either set, but not both. Use the union method to create a new set with all of the values in both sets. Use the subtracting method to create a new set with the values not in the specified set. Set membership and equality. 
This illustration depicts three sets, A, B, and C, with overlapping regions representing elements shared among sets. Set A is a superset of set B because A contains all elements in B. Conversely, set B is a subset of A because all of the elements in B are also contained by A. Set B and C are disjoint with one another because they share no elements in common. Use the is equal operator equal equal to determine whether two sets contain all of the same values. Use the is subset of method to determine whether all of the values of a set are contained in the specified set. Use the is superset of method to determine whether a set contains all of the values in a set specified set. Use the is strict subset of or is strict superset of methods to determine whether a set is a subset or a superset but not equal to a specified set. Use the is disjoint with method to determine whether two sets have no values in common. Dictionaries. A dictionary stores associations between keys of the same type and values of the same type in a collection with no defined ordering. Each value is associated with a unique key, which acts as an identifier for that value within the dictionary. Unlike items in an array, items in a dictionary do not have a specified order. You use a dictionary when you need to look up values based on their identifier in much the same way that a real-world dictionary is used to look up the definition for a particular word. Note. Swift's dictionary type is bridged to Foundation's NS Dictionary class. For more information about using dictionary with Foundation and Coco, see Bridging between Dictionary and NS Dictionary. Dictionary type shorthand syntax. The type of a Swift dictionary is written in full as dictionary key value, where key is the type of value that can be used as a dictionary key, and value is the type of value that the dictionary stores for those keys. Note. A dictionary key type must conform to the hashable protocol, like a set's value type. You can also write the type of dictionary in shorthand form as key colon value inside square brackets. Although the two forms are fundamentally identical, the shorthand form is preferred and is used throughout this guide when referring to the type of a dictionary. Creating an empty dictionary. As with arrays, you can create an empty dictionary of a certain type by using initializer syntax. This example creates an empty dictionary of type int colon string to store human readable names of integer values. Its keys are of type int and its values are of type string. If the context already provides type information, you can create an empty dictionary with an empty dictionary literal, which is written as left square bracket colon right square bracket. Creating a dictionary with a dictionary literal. You can also initialize a dictionary with a dictionary literal, which has a similar syntax to the array literal seen earlier. A dictionary literal is a shorthand way to write one or more key value pairs as a dictionary collection. A key value pair is a combination of a key and a value. In a dictionary literal, the key and value in each key value pair are separated by a colon. The key value pairs are written as a list separated by commas surrounded by a pair of square brackets. This example creates a dictionary to store the names of international airports. In this dictionary, the keys are three-letter International Air Transport Association codes and the values are airport names. The airports dictionary is declared as having a type of string string, which means a dictionary whose keys are of type string and whose values are also of type string. Note, the airports dictionary is declared as a variable with the var introducer and not a constant with the let introducer because more airports are added to the dictionary in the examples below. The airports dictionary is initialized with a dictionary literal containing two key value pairs. The first pair has a key of YYZ and a value of Toronto Pearson. The second pair has a key of DUB and a value of Dublin. This dictionary literal contains two string string pairs. This key value type matches the type of the airport's variable declaration, a dictionary with only string keys and only string values. And so the assignment of the dictionary literal is permitted as a way to initialize the airport's dictionary with two initial items. As with arrays, you do not have to write the type of the dictionary if you are initializing it with a dictionary literal whose keys and values have consistent types. 
the initialization of airports could have been written in this shorter form instead because all keys in the literal are of the same type as each other, and likewise all values are the same type of, as each other, Swift can infer that string colon string is the correct type to use for the airport's dictionary. Accessing and modifying a dictionary. You access and modify a dictionary through its methods and properties or by using subscript syntax. As with an array, you find out the number of items in a dictionary by checking its read-only counts property. Use the boolean is empty property as a shortcut for checking whether the count property is equal to zero. You can add a new item to a dictionary with subscript syntax. Use a new key of the appropriate type as the subscript index and assign a new value of the appropriate type. You can also use subscript syntax to change the value associated with a particular key. As an alternative to subscripting, use a dictionary's update value for key method to set or update the value for a particular key. Like the subscript examples above, the update value for key method sets a value for a key if none exists or updates the value if that key already exists. Unlike a subscript, however, the update value for key method returns the old value after performing an update. This enables you to check whether or not an update took place. The update value for key method returns an optional value of the dictionary's value type. For a dictionary that stores string values, for example, the method returns a value of type optional string. This optional value contains the old value for that key if one existed before the update, or nil if no value existed. You can also use subscript syntax to retrieve a value from the dictionary for a particular key. Because it is possible to request a key for which no value exists, a dictionary's subscript returns an optional value of the dictionary's value type. If the dictionary contains a value for the requested key, the subscript returns an optional value containing the existing value for that key. Otherwise, the subscript returns nil. You can use subscript syntax to remove a key value pair from a dictionary by assigning a value of nil for that key. Alternatively, remove a key value pair from a dictionary with the remove value for key method. This method removes the key value pair if it exists and returns the removed value, or returns nil if no value existed. Iterating over a dictionary. You can iterate over the key value pairs in a dictionary with a for in loop. Each item in the dictionary is returned as a key value tuple, and you can decompose the tuples members into temporary constants or variables as part of the iteration. For more about the for in loop, see for in loops. You can also retrieve an iterable collection of the dictionary's keys or values by accessing its keys and values properties. If you need to use a dictionary's keys or values with an API that takes an array instance, initialize a new array with the keys or values property. Swift's dictionary type does not have a defined ordering. To iterate over the keys or values of a dictionary in a specific order, use the sorted method on its keys or values property.